Is your business struggling to stand out from the crowd online? At Webamax, we specialize in turning clicks into customers. From SEO and PPC to social media management and stunning web design, we've got you covered. Boost your online presence and drive real results. Ready to take your business to the next level? Visit webamax.com. That's W E B I M A X.com for a free digital analysis. Roll the web with webamax.com. Hey there, Duke fans, and welcome to episode number 636 of the Duke Basketball Roundup. I am Donald Bly. I'm your host for this episode. I got Jason Evans alongside me. Jason, the NBA draft took place over the last couple of days, and of course, uh, we were hoping that we were able to record after the first day, but we had to wait just a little bit into day two to make sure that all of our guys were drafted so that we can discuss everything so we are going to talk about that obviously but first off Jason it has been a wild 24 hours for the both of us uh I was in Atlanta and didn't even get a chance to see you because you were underwater I was underwater (laughs) yeah how are you how are you feeling this morning uh it's been frenetic it's been crazy uh the past 24 hours have just been a lot (laughs) let's just put Mm -hmm. it that way uh working as a uh working as a writer and producer at CNN and also quote unquote, working as someone who follows Duke basketball and someone who is very passionate about USA soccer. Oh man, <laughs> it has just been a lot lately. <laughs> I, I I had all of that except for the working for CNN part, but I did uh, get to experience the traffic that is associated with blocking off Ooh, boy. an entire section of town due to the debate happening right across the street from my hotel. Uh, my so office, I had it, that going literally on. the le- debate literally happened three floors below where i work every single day needless to say i was working from home all week <laughs> I, I believe it i believe their secret service probably made that call uh they, oh they did your, yeah. <laughs> they said do, do not come to the office that's what i was told <laughs> do not come <laughs> yeah that, that, we prefer it's like no absolutely not but anyway jason throughout all of that the last 24 hours of course there was nba basketball that involved two of our blue devils uh the nba draft took place over two days in brooklyn new york and in the first round with the 16th pick, the Philadelphia 76ers drafted Jared McCain. Of course, Jared McCain coming from Sacramento as a freshman to Duke, and then now will be headed to the city of cheesesteaks and the Liberty Bell. And then we had to wait until a couple of picks into the second round to find out where Kyle Filipowski was going to go. Kyle Filipowski was in the green room. One of two guys, unfortunately, left in the green room after day one, comes back for day two, and is drafted with the 32nd pick to the Utah Jazz. Now, J- uh, let's uh, Jason, let's start with Jeremy McCain first because I think he slips a couple of places out of the lottery but was still kind of in that range that you and I discussed uh, that he possibly would be in. But slipping a couple picks out to the 76ers, for me, might be a win for Jeremy McCain because this seems like a really good situation for him. Yeah, I completely agree with you. Uh, the, the 76ers are a team that wants to surround – Joel Embiid with as many shooters as possible. And frankly, right now they, they don't have that many great shooters. Um, And and that's one of the reasons why I think that they jumped all over the chance to get a guy like Jared McCain, who could really, really fill it up for them. Um, Look that he's going to be competing with guys like Kelly Oubre, um, maybe buddy healed. I'm trying to think the Anthony Melton. These are some of the guys that the Sixers have on their roster who play who play shooting guard, you know, who play on the wing, because that's where I think Jared McCain is primarily going to play. He he's not going to take minutes from Tyrese Maxey at point guard. Tyrese Maxey is a is a truly outstanding um young point guard in the league. But I think that there's a chance for Jared McCain to really make a difference on this Philadelphia team. It is worth noting that Philadelphia has had great success with wing shooters from Duke. They had JJ Redick for a while. They had Seth Curry for a while. You can even argue that perhaps the best years of JJ and Seth's careers came in Philadelphia. Mm-hmm. Um, so this is a franchise that that likes Duke Wings, <laughs> and and I, I just think it is a really really good situation for a player like Jared to be on a team with a guy like Embiid, who's going to command so much attention and allow Jared to get maybe a few more open looks. Um, and also, it's a guy who can 
you know, maybe clean up some of the mistakes that perhaps Jared makes on defense because Embiid is a good rim rim protector as well. Uh, it, it it's it's a wonderful spot for him, and uh, I'm I'm thrilled for him because I know that Philly is a place that yeah, if you play hard, if you work hard at your game, the Philly fans will love you. They are going to really love Jared McCain. Yes, and like you said, he he was a fan favorite at Duke. I have no. Uh, reservations about the fact that he could become a fan favorite in Philly, especially with, again, the the work ethic that he possesses that has been well documented. And that's not going to uh, change now that he's in a 76ers uniform as opposed to a Duke uniform. That is going to really endear him to that particular fan base. The fact that he works hard, he grinds, he gets rebounds, uh, which is something a lot of wings don't do. And, and like you said, Jason, he he's in a position where he doesn't have to be the man or he doesn't have to be thrown to the wolves, so to speak. He can kind of come along and just become a part of what is already, you know, at times a very potent offense and and just kind of help, you know, complement it with his shooting ability. And also, again, like his ability to get rebounds and extend possessions. That's going to be uh, a key in the NBA. So I'm really looking forward to seeing what he can do. Uh, with the 76ers, and, and I'm really, really glad that he fell into what appears to be a really good situation for him. Now, Jason, let's move on to Kyle Filipowski, because, of course, as we mentioned at the top, Kyle Filipowski slips into the second round and goes to the Utah Jazz. He's just He had only had to wait a couple picks into the second round to hear his name, but this was a guy that was you know branded by many as someone who could be on the lower end of the lottery, maybe even the lower end of the first round, uh, but slips into the second. First off, let's talk about that his, his his slip to the Utah Jazz in the second round. Your thoughts on that? Oh, I, I mean, really, Donald? You're gonna? <laughs> yeah, I mean, uh, okay. We can we'll we'll wait on. Actually, let me let me start with this, and this is tangential to the story that everyone probably knows. We're we're going to discuss in a moment. the The word that came out of you know various folks who follow the NBA, analysts and and reporters and the such was that Kyle Filipowski had a couple things working against him that that hurt his draft stock. That first of all, when he went to the NBA Combine, his arms didn't measure that long. The NBA is really big on length. So Kyle's measurables weren't that fabulous. He also didn't score very well in some of the agility drills. Look, Kyle is not the most fleet of foot kind of player. And and as a result, he he didn't do very well in those kind of, you know, speed and agility ratings. And so his his measurables, so to speak, didn't jump off the page. But then the other story that went around was that he struggled in his interviews with teams that when he went and spoke to, and believe me, interviews matter. Jay Billis, when he spoke to us, talked about how Jared McCain will be a positive influence on any team he is at. And, and that Jared McCain will be a, you know, a great, a great guy to have in the locker room. NBA teams care about that kind of stuff. It matters. And I think the word that slipped out was that Kyle Filipowski you know, it maybe came off not quite completely prepared for the interviews. And, uh, you know, there was also some talk that some of his answers didn't seem, you know, like the kind of things that NBA teams wanted to hear. And as a result, look, if you're an NBA team and you're trying to decide between guy A and guy B, and they're fairly similar, and you go, ah, eh, guy A may be a little bit of a little weird, a little bit of a problem in my locker room, you're going to pick guy B all day and twice on Sunday. And that starts to balloon on players. Sometimes it's not like Kyle Filipowski was so much better than these other guys that got taken ahead of him that you go, Oh wait, what the heck is happening here? Um, and, and as a result, he suddenly found himself falling into the second round. Now at that point, I think people NBA team started to go, well, wait a second. This is, this is too talented a player for us to be letting him go any further. And so he goes to Utah, which, I mean, are we going to discuss why Utah might be a good situation for him? <laughs> well, we'll get to that in a second, like uh, the off the basketball court stuff. But at yeah. least on the basketball court, you know, they they do like some tall, you know, lengthy guys who can shoot the ball and also drive the lane, right? The Lori Merkin and he, who's one of those guys who's kind of lengthy. Um, they had a uh, was uh, I forgot the big name, big guy that they had um, back in the day when they traded Rudy Gobert. They kind of went away from the guys who just live in the paint to guys who can shoot threes and also kind of, you know, score in different ways. So in that case, he, again, uh, it's a second round talent. People are thinking, well, you know, most second round you know guys don't make it to their second contract, but he has a chance to carve out something in Utah there. I will say on the two things that you mentioned, the measurables and the interview, when you, as you mentioned, right, there's a lot of things that 
that all these NBA teams check off a list to make sure that the guy that they want is the guy that they want. And at the end of the day, one of those intangibles could knock you down below somebody else. And I think that's what happens where, I mean, someone's like, someone will probably think why are interviews so important? They may not be the most important thing, but they are an important thing that the NBA does. That's why all 32, 30 teams interview as many players as they possibly can bring them in for workouts to see if they could be a good fit for the franchise. And I think when you start to hear that he's stumbling on interview questions, that's something that again, may not be the biggest deal, but it can slip him down, you know, slip a guy down, be, you know, a couple of players here and there. And all of a sudden you're looking at, is he possibly going in the first round? And I think that plus the immeasurables, a lot of people said that his uh, wingspan was not the same. It was a shorter length than his height. Um, which is a big deal in the NBA. They really like guys who have wingspans that are longer uh, than their height. Even if it's at their height, that's fine. But to be shorter than it is a, is a big question mark. And again, it doesn't seem like a big deal, but they want that. And if they want that and you don't have it, they're going to go to the next guy who does have it. And that's how you end up slipping out into the second round. Hey, one really quick thing before we get to the, the elephant in the room. Um, I do think Utah is an interesting situation for Kyle because he will be playing behind and presumably learning from Laurie Markkinen, um, who is so similar to Kyle. It's kind of crazy. They're both seven footers. They're both guys who probably operate on the perimeter better than they do in the post. And I think there it is possible that Kyle will be able to learn a lot from Laurie Markkinen. Uh, Markkinen is not a guy who had instant success when he came into the NBA. You know, it took him a little bit of time to develop into the player that he has become. And, um, you know, he was good from the get-go, but he's really become a great player the past couple of years in Utah. And I think it'll be very interesting for Kyle to to sort of, you know, learn the things that Laurie Markkinen can teach him about developing into a elite stretch four, which is sort of what I think Kyle's future probably is in the NBA. I still don't think his future is really as a center. Um so uh, I, I I like the fit from the standpoint of of learning and developing from a guy who knows how to do it. And again, won't have the pressure of coming in and having to be uh, thrown into the lineup and succeeding immediately. He can he can take that time uh, to develop into the player that the Utah Jazz need to take it to the next level. Now, Jason, we've talked about the on the basketball court stuff. Let's let's talk about the elephant in the room now. Yeah. Uh, during the draft, uh, I, I don't think, again, the last two days have been a blur for both of us, so bear with me if I if I get timelines wrong. But during the draft at some point, it came out that... It was actually after the first round, before the second round. After the yeah. first round. Yeah, it, you, if you have a... Go ahead, go ahead, Jason, take it. Um, yeah, so after the first round, before the second round, there just started to be this talk that initiated from someone who claims to be Kyle Filipowski's brother. That Actually, I should back up. It actually initiated with an NBA reporter. I I, um, I want to say it was Sam Bassini, but I may be wrong. Um, one of the NBA reporters was talking about, oh, who's still available? Who's still, you know, who's a first round talent who's available still in the second round? And one of these reporters was doing an interview and he said, I think it was Sam Sharani. And now that I'm thinking about it, I think Sam's said Kyle Filipowski and here's why he dropped. And he, and he said, and there's just some weird stuff going on with his girlfriend. And that's sort of all Sam's said. And people went, wait, girlfriend, wait, what, what, what's the story here? So then it came out, Kyle Filipowski, a guy who claims to be Kyle's older brother. I have not verified that he is Kyle's older. I think he is, but I have not verified it for sure. But a a guy who claims to be Kyle's older brother said that Kyle's girlfriend, fiance, they, they got engaged a little while back, that Kyle's fiance has kept him from the family. The family and Kyle have become estranged. And and the family claims that this fiance has been grooming and pursuing Kyle for a long time. Um, there, they the family alleges that there is some kind of that they're trying to get Kyle essentially into a a, a sect of the Mormon faith that that is a bit cultish, perhaps. I don't want to get into the religious side of it at all. That's mm-hmm. not something for you and me. But there are now a lot of people talking about whether Kyle Filipowski was you know, perhaps in some kind of predatory or groomed relationship. Um, Donald, I will go ahead and say that when I was at Duke back in the winter, I did hear that Kyle Filipowski 
had a unusual relationship with his with his girlfriend. I, I heard that they had gotten engaged around Christmas time. Um, I'm not sure if that's the case, but I believe it is. Um, I heard from a number of people that that Kyle was not as close with his teammates as he might have been able to be because of this relationship, perhaps. That Kyle was a guy who often was very quick to leave the locker room after games and after practice, uh, that he was not someone who went out socially with the rest of the team. And um, and there are a lot of people who blamed it on this girlfriend who who is, I believe, eight years older than Kyle is. And they started dating when Kyle was a junior in high school. Um, Kyle, I believe, uh, was 16 or 17. She was 24, 25 when they started dating. Mm-hmm. Um, Donald, I don't want, you know, look, I'm, I'm not here to necessarily judge whether uh, a locker room has to be super, super tight for a team to be successful. Um, I'm not trying to, uh, people may think I'm trying to blame things on Kyle or on the girlfriend or anything. Look, we, we had half the story from this guy who claims to be Kyle's brother. And actually Kyle's mother also tweeted and, and uh, about this, um, and As confirmed well, yeah. some of it. And, and, and that is legit. I looked into it. She is definitely his mother, the, or at least this is an account that has been tweeting about the Filipowski brothers. For over five years. It's either a really long con or it's really the mom. I think right. it's really the mom. Um, I, we're not here to cast judgment. We haven't heard anything from Kyle or his fiance slash girlfriend. But I do know that Kyle wasn't as close with his teammates as he could have been. They clearly support him. We saw the Duke coaches with Kyle when he was drafted. We saw Jared McCain and Kyle doing videos together and things like that. I am not saying that like Kyle was estranged from the team or something like that, but I'm going to be honest and say that I do think that perhaps this relationship in some ways impacted some of Kyle's relationships with other people at Duke. And it certainly has impacted his relationships with his family. And it looks like maybe some NBA teams had a little extra hesitation because of some of their concerns about Kyle's personal situation. And I'm going to leave it at that. Yeah, I I think also to keep going with the timeline, I think a lot of people started figuring out what was going on when he was in the green room and his family wasn't there, right? Like his mom wasn't there, his brothers weren't there. Um, He has a twin brother, um, wasn't there either. Um, So that's where people were kind of like, hey, the biggest night of his life, like family not there, what's up? Like what's more important than this to them? And that's when I think some of the tweets started emerging of why they weren't in the green room with Kyle Filipowski at the NBA draft. So I think one, I think it's just, I think it's, it's hard to, like you said, when I want to pass judgment on the relationship and how it happened, what have you, I will say that some of the people who have now heard about this have linked it to some of the play on the court, right? Some of what, felt like you know the team being off as far as chemistry or or, or what have you players only meetings things like that that we had heard about and and talked about during the season now people are starting to put you know try to put together a puzzle that may not exist but they're trying to fit the pieces in anyway and i think uh it, that's the saddest part about this i think the saddest part is, is the fact that whatever is going on has apparently affected his relationship with his family i think that you and i family no is question important. that is it's that's that is the number one that thing tragic. that i'm worried about yeah. That's the number one thing that I'm worried about with regards to this. Uh, I mean, you kind of hinted uh, on the religious stuff. You kind of hinted Utah might be a better situation for him if this is what is happening, right? And for but yeah. we're not going to discuss that part. I think the one thing is when guys into the into the NBA or the NFL or or Major League Baseball or whatever, you need to have a support system and you need to have a, a system of people who are not there because you have money, and the people who are usually not all the time. But most of the time, who are involved in that, who have been there for you since the very beginning, have been your family. And so I think that is the saddest part is that as he enters this new world and has a, a more a, a bigger necessity for a support system, that some of that support system, for for whatever reason, will not be around for him. And I, I hope that does not affect his development in the NBA. I hope he's able to figure figure life out and and make it where everything is cool and he's able to hopefully you know reestablish a relationship with his family but that i think is the biggest take from all this in my opinion is that the family was not there and for me that is sad yeah i i've got nothing to add to that that is 100 percent. i was going to jump in at one point when you were talking and say that 
I'm saddest about the family. And then you hit on it. And, and mm -hmm. that that's the, the tragedy here is that apparently a young man and his parents and his brothers aren't talking to each other, aren't communicating. Um, it's, that's just awful. It's so, it, there's nothing more to say than it's awful. And I, I, I dearly hope that they can all find a way to put it all back together and, and come together because there's nothing more important than family. Yeah. And, and, and above all on the bath on the court, uh, we're hoping Kyle Filipowski has a very vibrant career with Utah Jazz and, and beyond. We hope that Jeremy McCain balls out for the 76ers. We obviously will be watching like we do everybody else with the brotherhoods. So I think that's a good place to take a quick break on the other side, more from the NBA draft, because while other guys weren't drafted, Dukies were on the move. We'll tell you who is moving where after this. With the Lucky Land Slots, you can get lucky just about anywhere. This is your captain speaking. Uh, we've got clear runway and the weather's fine, but we're just going to circle up here a while and uh, get lucky. No, no, nothing like that. It's just these cash prizes add up quick. So I suggest you sit back, keep your tray table upright, and start getting lucky. Play for free at LuckyLandslots.com. Are you feeling lucky? No purchase necessary. Void where prohibited by law. 18 plus terms and conditions apply. See website for details. All right, we're, we're back. And Jason, you know, obviously during the NBA draft, you, you're an Atlanta Hawks fan. I'm a Detroit Pistons fan. And, and in addition to all the Dukies uh, that might be drafted on draft night, we are also looking at our professional teams. And, and unfortunately, fortunately for us, we could talk about our teams in the form of Duke because we had uh, two Duke guys that were on the move, one involving your Atlanta Hawks, one involving my Detroit Pistons. Of course, Wendell Moore in a trade that involved a couple of draft picks last night. Wendell Moore will be headed from the Minnesota Timberwolves to the Detroit Pistons. While at the same time, uh, it was, again, timelines are shaky, but I think it was roughly around the same time, A.J. Griffin, who was uh, formerly with the Atlanta Hawks, uh, he has been traded by the Atlanta Hawks to the Houston Rockets. So I gain a member of the Brotherhood on the Pistons. Jason loses one with the Hawks. Uh, he still yeah. has one. He still has Jalen Johnson. Uh, but... Uh, Jason, your thought on, on first AJ Griffin, because I know when you sent that to me, you were kind of like, wow, like this kid had it all. And now he's going to the Rockets. Um, but is I think it's it might be a better situation for him than what he had in Atlanta. Yeah. So uh, the, the thing that surprised me was that AJ Griffin was basically, you know, like a fringe lottery pick two years ago. And he was traded to the Rockets for the number 44 pick in the draft. Um, you know, so essentially in two years, he's gone from being. Uh, you know, when you're drafting a guy in the lottery, that's a guy you expect to be in your rotation, if not a starter. He's gone from being a guy who had that kind of value to a guy whose value is middle of the second round, which are guys who quite often don't even make a roster or they, you know, they get a two-way deal, that kind of thing. So that shows you how far he has fallen. I do think a change of scenery was necessary for A.J. Griffin. Um, look, just from his rookie year to his second season, he went from averaging almost 20 minutes per game to only averaging eight minutes per game. Frankly, he played in 72 games as a rookie. He only played in 20 games last year for the Hawks. He just was not a part of the Hawks rotation. I know injuries factored into that some, but also his actual performance factored into it a, a pretty good bit. He had basically just fallen out of favor in Atlanta um, with Quinn Snyder. Dookie Quinn Snyder is the coach. I, I'm not quite sure what it was that, that caused A.J. Griffin to not have much of a future in Atlanta, but they decided to move him on to to a Houston team that that has a lot of wings and and feels like it is on the rise but but clearly valued him enough to say yeah let's bring this guy in and see what he can do um so uh you know I'm I'm hopeful that that AJ Griffin will get get chances there that he was not getting in Atlanta yeah and it's it's interesting right with the with the Houston Rockets you mentioned a lot of a lot of young pieces and A.J. Griffin is still young enough to be considered one of those young pieces that they're using to hopefully build into a core. But uh, I, I, it's going to be interesting to see what he does there, especially with so many of those guys on the wing. I will say with Wendell Moore, Wendell Moore uh, was with the Timberwolves last year. He only played in 25 games, but was on the bench for, uh, you know, you know the whole season. It wasn't like yeah. he was a two-way player or anything like that. Goes to a Detroit team that is, I will say is in turmoil and in, in, in a real state of transition. Uh, of course, Trajan Langdon has taken over as president of basketball ops, but 
uh, the draft uh, was kind of like, hey, how do we get some pieces and then try to figure out what we have? And I think that's the key here uh, when it comes to Wendell Moore. Can he come in and be uh, a veteran of sorts? Uh, I mean, he's still young, but he's going to be one of the older guys on this team uh, next season uh, should he stick it out. So hopefully he's able to do that, at least for me, because uh, I you know, I think we both love love the kid and, and love what he can do on the court. And hopefully he's able to find uh, a nice home uh, there in Detroit with the Pistons. Yeah, it is worth noting, though, <laughs> the Wendell Moore trade is a little crazy. Yeah. So Minnesota traded Wendell Moore and the 37th pick to Detroit for the 53rd pick. Essentially, Wendell Moore was a negative in the deal. What they were doing was they were getting Detroit to pick up Wendell Moore's salary. And in exchange for that, the uh, the Timberwolves moved back by 16 picks in the second round. And the reason they had to do that was Wendell Moore's making the salary of a first round draft pick and Minnesota's salary cap structure is such that they had to, they had to shed a little more than a million dollars or so in order to get under like this, the first apron or the second apron. One of those, one of those yeah, salary cap things tax. that NBA teams are like, we got to do this right now or we're going to be paying penalties. And the way for them to do that was to ship Wendell Moore out. And they essentially had to pay Detroit to take on Wendell Moore's salary. That said, Donald, I'm with you. Detroit is a team that does not have that many veterans, and the roster is in complete flux. And as a result, I hope that it's a team that maybe will give Wendell Moore more of a chance than he ever got in Minnesota because he frankly just never got much of a chance at all to play for the Minnesota Timberwolves. Yeah, so we're hoping that uh, new new horizons, new locations, new situations mean uh, a lot of great, great success for A.J. Griffin and Wendell Moore, and of course, for Kyle Filipowski and for Jared McCain. Jason, I think that should do it for episode number 636. But wait, I think you got one more thing. Yeah, I was going to say, I want to give folks a tease. You know we love being insiders here. <laughs> tease away. Yeah. Coming in your feed, probably in the next day or so, got a little more intel of what's going on on campus at Duke and what's going on with the team in these scrimmages and practices and stuff. I'm even going to go ahead and say to you that I think I may have an inkling who the starters are right now. Not a sure thing, but I've, I've got some very good hints. We're going to have that on the next episode. Check your feed. we got some more, more inside info coming to you here, courtesy of the DBR podcast. So look for that in your feeds probably in the next day or so after you listen to this episode. Again, Jason and I have had an incredible 24 hours, and we told you that this week was going to be wild. It <laughs> continues to get wilder. So we are going to give you one over the weekend to hopefully bring you into the start of July, but that will do it for episode number 636 of the Duke Basketball Roundup. Jason, thank you as always. I am Donald Wine. Now it is time for the Duke Band. They're going to play us out and they're going to take us home. So I will freely tell you that I mean, I got some notes and stuff, but it has been such an insane 24 hours or so for me. Oh, I believe I, it. For you, too. I, yeah. I, like, so I watched the soccer match, which mm -hmm. sucked. I mean, yep. <laughs> gut wrenching. Just mm -hmm. so frustrating. Um, then watched the debate, which amped me up so much that I couldn't fall asleep to like. 12 30 1 o'clock in the morning um and then i i was at work starting at 5 a.m this morning i got like you know like three or four hours of sleep um I, my whole day was producing segments about the debate until mm -hmm. 10 a.m when the supreme court dropped a couple bombs on us oh yeah i, I haven't even caught up with that yet that was why oh was my god they're just like massive i mean we knew they were coming and we sort of knew what the results of these cases were going to be, but they were still unbelievable, huge stories. So then I'm trying to, I'm putting together segments on on the debate, on um, the Chevron ruling, which is this huge Supreme Court decision that mm -hmm. basically has changed the power of the EPA forever. Yep. And and luckily I had someone else on my team who who handled the, the January 6th case that the Supreme Court was doing. But, I, and, and then you and I are doing a podcast. I'm just like... Yeah, I so uh, head you know, swirling. <laughs> funny enough, Jason. So of course I was staying across the street from the uh, or across the highway from CNN. Yeah. Um, they had blocked off traffic when we woke up 
on uh, yesterday morning and would I couldn't even get back to my hotel until like 11:30 or 12 because traffic was still blocked into the point where you couldn't even like navigate through Midtown. So we did that. We went to the game. I came back. I didn't even watch the debate. I'm actually was watching it now. Um, you don't need been, to. <laughs> well, I saw the first 10 minutes. It's you know well, yeah. whatever. But um, the but I, I'm like halfway through that, so I'm going to finish watching that after we do this while I edit this. But even then, I was just like, all right, I just need something to eat. Everything was closed because it's a normal Thursday uh, in Atlanta. So everything in Midtown was closing at like 10, 30, 11 o'clock. And we didn't get even get back to uh, the spot until, you know, 10, 30. I found one bar that had that I'd been to for lunch that was like, we're doing last call on food, last call on alcohol. It's like, give me all of that. Um, I need all of that for for what has transpired today. <laughs> um, so, uh, so I ate real quick. My friend showed up and then they were finally able to navigate around Midtown so that they could drive me to within a block of my uh, hotel and let me out. So yeah, that then I got on the plane this morning and flew back and have been catching up with the world uh, since then. So it's been a, it, I don't know. I don't know why this game or the, the, the thing was scheduled for this date um, because they probably thought, oh, there's not anything going on in Atlanta. Why would we do that? Everything like Atlanta was shut down. It was wild. It's just uh, crazy. 